take his show on the road, signing a huge contract with the Lakers. This is going to be the biggest star in Los Angeles. To the Chicago Bulls. Michael Jordan speaks. First time since he signed his new $30 million something contract. Teammates are excited about the prospect of learning from and playing with the master. Chauncey Billups found his glass slipper in Detroit. He agreed to re-sign with the Lakers. In this fall, I'm going to take my talents to South Beach. These were indeed parts of the process for LeBron's historic pivot from Miami back to Northeastern Ohio. It's here, and it's Golden State for Kevin Durant. Let me say it again, I'm here to stay. So the chosen one has chosen Hollywood. We're on Kawhi Leonard's clock. We reached car chase levels with choppers. And a huge move for the Nets. Which means I get to do this! The Jumps Free Agency Special is live and rolling. I'm Rachel Nichols, joined by Stephen A. Smith, Matt Barnes. We've got Kendrick Perkins waiting for us as well over there in Houston. Hey, Perk, we're going to have a slew of guests stopping by throughout the show, including, of course, Adrian Wojnarowski in just a minute or two. Now, you just watched a recap of how free agency has gone in the past, guys. And if you've watched this show over the years, you know about the trade crank. So, if something happens, we got a little bit of adjustment. I, I do want to make a point here before I pull it. We have a little bit of adjustment. Because of COVID, we're still all trying to be <laughs> safe. We can't shoot all that smoke into the air and have <laughs> all of our little particles moving around. So we've reached a compromise here. Um, let's take a look. It's virtual. Let's take a look. Here we go. When, I, when we hear a trade, we'll do this. Here we go. Yeah. Not bad. Still, not we bad. still got it. That's not, that's not bad. We, got it. we all make adjustments with COVID. Production, whoever took her power away, because she was getting out of hand with that thing in previous years, scaring everybody. So thank you, whoever virtualized it. I do want to give Matt credit, by the way, because when I said when we were setting up for the show, I said, now we won't have the actual smoke here in the studio. Mm -hmm. He said, I can provide some extra smoke if you, it, if you would know. like. So, you, you know. know. It works. It works. It works. Matt, we'll hold we're off on it. your kind of smoke. Just just for hey, now, but right. Hey. Stephen A is obviously very happy we're not showering him with CO2. Thank you very much. <laughs> there we go. All right. Um, here's what we know so far. I just want to bring you up to date. Zach Levine said he, quote, just wants his respect when it comes to a potential new deal, an extension with the Bulls as he enters the last season of his four-year, $78 million contract with Chicago. Brian Windhorst is going to join us later to discuss that. And as first reported by Yahoo Sports, Kawhi Leonard has opted out of his contract. He is now officially a free agent. Now, this is very different from a couple of years ago. Remember, this time, Kawhi recovering from ACL surgery, an injury that kept him out of the Western Conference Finals, could keep him out for a chunk or all of next season. Woj also reporting the Phoenix Suns optimistic they can come to terms with Chris Paul after he chose to opt out of his final year of his contract should resign in Phoenix as the Heat picked up Goran Dragic's option. That was for more than $19 million. Now, according to Woj, there is a very important reason for that. They intend to use that cap hold as part of a sign and trade deal to try to grab Raptors point guard Kyle Lowry as they position themselves to be the front runners in the Lowry sweepstakes. So guys, look, it is a lot going on to join us and discuss all the storylines. Our senior insider, Adrian Wojnarowski, welcome back, Woj. This is a huge day for you. I know you're going to be on your phone most of the afternoon. What is the very latest on the Kyle Lowry situation? Well, Rachel, I think everything's in place when we hit 6 o'clock Eastern uh, to get moving on a Kyle Lowry deal to the Miami Heat. Uh, Goran Dragic, uh, Precious Achua, their first-round pick in Miami last year. A really good young player out of Memphis uh, who uh, I'm told would be part of the, the Heat's package to uh, the Raptors to try to get uh, the kind of sign-and-trade uh, offer that would, you know, that would uh, entice the Raptors into helping Kyle Lowry get to the Heat. They don't have the cap space to sign him, but if you incentivize uh, the deal enough with Toronto, I think there's a pathway to a deal, and certainly uh, the motivation for Kyle Lowry to get to Miami to to join Jimmy Butler, his good friend, uh, a player who really fits the Heat identity and certainly yeah. uh, fits their timeline of win now. So I think everything's in place for Kyle Lowry to be a member of the Miami Heat, uh, perhaps as early as tonight.
Hmm, interesting. And look, we were saying when Kyle Lowry was not dealt at the trade deadline, wow, does this mean he's going to leave Toronto for nothing? If they can work out a sign and trade with the Raptors, however, then he won't be leaving, quote, for nothing. So Masai Ujiri coming out with something on that deal, again, like Masai often does. I want to move on to Kawhi Leonard. He also opted out of his deal. Does it appear he will be back with the Clippers? Because one thing we were thinking was maybe he would keep this year and then just work out an extension. Instead, he did do the opt out. He, he did, and it's, I, I think it's some uh, contractual gymnastics. Uh, listen, he can do any number of things with his deal. He could do a one plus one. He can do a longer deal. You know, he's going to spend this year rehabbing most of the season, if not all of it, coming off that ACL surgery. But the expectation is that he will return to the Clippers. Uh, the kind of contract it'll be is unclear, uh, but uh, I, I think that Kawhi Leonard and the Clippers. Certainly the Clippers are proceeding as though he will be back and how they're planning uh, to handle free agency, uh, handle their cap, knowing that they're going to be minus him this year. But the expectation is he certainly returns at full strength the following year. And who knows, maybe there's a way he can return late in the season in L.A. Well, look, they were very competitive all the way up through the middle of the Western Conference Finals without him. So that has got to give them some good feelings going in there. It's so interesting. We played the clip at the top of the show. It was your voice, Woj, talking about how after he left Toronto, we were in the helicopter car chase part of Kawhi's free agency. <laughs> None of that this season just shows you how fast things move in this league. Yeah. Chris Paul, another huge name. He opted out of his player option for that last year. Does his future still, though, appear to be in Phoenix? It, it does, Rachel. And I think uh, both the Suns and Chris Paul are really motivated to get a deal done tonight. Uh, they can do, you know, they can do a long term deal, you know, perhaps three years. Uh, moving forward, you know, he'll be 37 years old next year in the playoffs, but you saw the high level Chris Paul was still playing at this year. You know, just like Kyle Lowry, you know, mid 30 point guards who are playing, you know, at all star level later and later into their careers. But, but I think that the, the motivation is there, the desire for the Suns and Chris Paul to get a deal done. I believe they will. And it's interesting, we've talked about some of the players, but there's teams still who are going to have some cap room today, too, whether it's New Orleans, right, the New York Knicks, the Dallas Mavericks just cleared some space. Do we expect any smaller deals with those teams, or do you think that's going to be more in the next few days? Well, I think you'll see a flurry of action tonight. You know, certainly mm -hmm. the Knicks, you know, they want to keep their own free agents. Uh, New Orleans Noel, Alex Burks, Derek Rose, all players I think they'd like to keep there, uh, you know, watch, you know, if Goran Dragic ends up in Toronto, whether it's a trade or an eventual buyout, I think there'll be a lot of interest in Dallas. Remember, you know, he is really, his relationship with Luka Doncic, you know, both from Slovenia, I think uh, Dragic was really a mentor to him. They share the same agent, Bill Duffy. So I think there's certainly uh, maybe a pathway for Dragic uh, if this sign and trade does go through with Toronto, either they trade him and certainly there's other teams who have point guard needs uh, who are going to have great interest in Goran Dragic. So uh, I think that's you know, I think something that plays out here over a period of time. Certainly a point guard kind of feel to this week. Well, thanks so much. We will yeah. be following your Twitter thanks, account Rach. with bated breath. And we will see and hear from you throughout the day. All right, guys, I want to talk more we about go. Kyle Lowry. He is looking, as Woj says, like he might be a member of the Miami Heat. So, Stephen... What do you think that fit is with Miami, Jimmy Butler, Bam Adebayo down there? I'm not moved. Really? I'm not moved. Hmm. I just have to be honest with you. Um, I'm a fan of Kyle Lowry. He's a champion. Average 17 points a game last year. Can shoot in the mid-30% from three-point range. He's definitely an upgrade as far as I'm concerned from a Goran Dragic, from uh, a Kendrick Nunn, who I think has got a lot of promise. I get all of that. Here's the problem. When we last saw you, what happened to you? You got swept. Who was that by? That was by the Milwaukee Bucks. That's not going to be the difference. And okay. that's where I'm coming from. When I think about Kyle Lowry, if he were with the Philadelphia 76ers, because you've got Embiid, if you were able to keep Ben Simmons while you still have him, the Bias Harris of the world, and stuff like that, and he was added, added to that mix. His experience, his poise, his defensive tenacity, his fervor, he's from that area. I covered them. I yeah. actually covered them when I was, I was right for the Philadelphia Inquirer. This dude is a special player, no, mis no mistake about it. But in Miami, as they're presently constructed, I don't see him making that big of a deal 
in terms of, you know, just basically changing the course of their future in that regard. I don't see it. I definitely think this is an upgrade, and I agree. I still think if they're going to be contenders, they're going to find another piece. And I also think after hearing Rhodes speak, they're going to have to throw some more people in that pot. I don't know if Goran Dragic and their rookie from last year is going to be enough to entice uh, Toronto. So they might have to throw one of their shooters in, which I'm sure they don't want to do. But I agree. Kyle Lowry, 35, still very solid, can still production, a great on-the-floor leader, in, in, you know, which they need sometimes outside of Jimmy Butler. It's a good fit, but I still feel, you know, the East is with our Brooklyn being strong, Milwaukee, the defending champs. Kyle Lowry is going to be one piece to another piece that they're going to need to really contend in the Eastern Conference. Now, Perk, I know you're always hot on those goons from Miami, as you like to call them. Do you agree with Stephen A that this isn't quite going to get it done? Or do you think maybe this could make them make a stab in the East and be coming out of the East? Uh, I, I respectfully disagree with Stephen A. And I'm going to say this. Why? Because one of the most important positions in the NBA is the point guard position. And you're right. He's a huge upgrade from Kendrick Nunn and Goran Dragic. And look, Kyle Lowry is one of the best floor generals in the game today. You have guys like Ray John Rondo, Chris Paul, LeBron James, and Kyle Lowry falls right in that category. Kyle Lowry is going to take pressure away from Jimmy Butler. Now Jimmy Butler don't have to worry about getting others involved and facilitating. He takes that load off where Jimmy only have to worry about getting buckets. And Kyle Lowry has that type of tenacity and that type of spirit where it rubs off on everyone. One. We saw at times throughout this postseason where Bam went missing, right? And there's only so much you could do as a coach with Eric Exposure being mm -hmm. on the sideline for us, find up your guys to bring back that energy, that tenacity. Well, Kyle Lowry is that guy. When you step on the floor with him at any given time, mm -hmm. you feel like you have an opportunity mm -hmm. to win the game because he's one of the most ultimate competitors that we have in the game today. So I do feel like if Kyle Larry being added to the Heat as of what they are mm -hmm. with Bam and Jimmy Butler, it makes them a top five team in the well, Eastern Conference, hands well, down. Well, let me tell you something. First of all, um, I want to tell you something, Rachel and Matt, that you know Kendrick Perkins has been doing a marvelous job all year covering the NBA. And what you have to understand about Kendrick Perkins is that he's gotten <laughs> slick. He's gotten very, very slick. Mm -hmm. He's learned to get very, very slick. Let me tell you why. I don't recall Matt Bond saying it was a downgrade. I certainly yes. didn't say it was a downgrade. Matter of <laughs> fact, we all agree. It's an upgrade. What I said was is that that's not going to make the difference when you look at the Eastern Conference. In other words, instead of getting swept like they did, you might get you might lose in six. You might lose you in five or six. Them a round or two I, I, I don't know. No, I'm saying it against that level of competition. Okay. That's what I'm talking about, specifically against the competition. Okay. And then we took a take into account what Kyle Lowry did. They were in Toronto before Kawhi Leonard arrived, okay? Yeah. And they were winning 58, 59 games and they were capturing the number one seed you and mean, stuff like that. Yeah. But you know something? DeMar DeRozan, who can ball, who is no yeah. scrub, he wasn't any Kawhi Leonard. And once Kawhi Leonard arrived, it's a difference. Why? Because you're 6'8", you're built like a chiseled brick house. <laughs> you can get to the hole. You got a perimeter shot. You can do a lot of things. And Kyle Lowry's poise, his veteran leadership, his perimeter shooting, his ability to draw offensive fouls became more pronounced because of who mm -hmm. you had with you. He ain't going to have that with him in Miami. That's the problem. Well, well, well go ahead, Perk. Oh, well, well, you see how... You see how Stephen A. Tim t telling the world that I tend to get slick. He also do the same thing, and I catch him <laughs> master, in ways right? as well, right? <laughs> so think about this. You 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 want to know what happened to the Toronto Raptors when Kyle Lowry and DeRozan were winning those games and LeBron. having the best LeBron. record in the uh -huh. Eastern Conference? They ran into LeBron James. LeBron. They ran into LeBron James, and they ran into a, a hungry LeBron mm -hmm. James mm -hmm. that wasn't going to be denied because he wanted to deliver a championship to mm -hmm. Cleveland. Right. All I'm saying is, is that I'm not picking the Heat to come out of the Eastern right. Conference. Mm -hmm. I'm saying that they are a threat. Right. When you add Kyle Lowry, and I also think that Jimmy Butler and Bam last year, they just looked tired and defeated from the long playoff run that they had the year before going to the and coming back hey, man. and having the season that they had. And, I'm, and I'm saying now they, run into, now they run into a person that I watched you this morning remind the world is now the face of the NBA. Are we talking to Giannis? Saying.
Yes. <laughs> well, that was what, Kendrick Perkins' that, words. Well, that was, Not mine, because I don't agree with that. That's where I was okay. going to go next. And by the way, we'll talk later in the show that's because fine. Giannis chimed in on whether he's the face of the NBA or not. So we'll get to that. But it is interesting in the East. You've got, of course, the defending champions. Respect to them. And certainly Giannis wants more than one. He's already talked about that. You've got Philadelphia, which is going to make a serious effort to retool. We know that they're shopping Ben Simmons. We don't know who they're going to come back with. You've got the Brooklyn Nets. I almost said New Jersey, Stephen. I had to catch myself, Brooklyn. but we spent so much time in that Brooklyn. Northeast corridor. Brooklyn. The Brooklyn Nets, who of course are returning their big three and feel that they are contenders for the title. Miami trying to nose its way in there. So much though in this free agency period can depend on Kyle Lowry, even if, as you say, the balance of power isn't shifting as much. Bobby Marks made this chart, which was amazing. This was in a conference room in Bristol that he made for himself. And he was just like, from Kyle Lowry, all of these things flow. So we won't really know what the balance of power is even until Kyle Lowry, even if he signs with Miami, as we expect, if that sign and trade works out, as we expect, there's all these other dominoes that Bobby thinks are going to fall. That will also tell us who is going to be positioned where. That's why this week and today is so exciting, guys, because the whole league can change. Just wait a few minutes. We'll be back for you right here on the show. We've got five hours of free agency talk coming up. Right now, we're going to talk 